Hi, I'm Kevin Hartley and welcome to Kevin Hartley Photography in my office. This is a channel that I've set up to share my experiences of wildlife and nature with others. So let's go. What I want to do in this video is share with you uh, my experience and my knowledge of uh, how to photograph butterflies. Uh, the aim being that you can get some images like these. There are about 60 different species of butterfly in the UK. You can find them all over the country from gardens, parks, woods and out in the general countryside. What I always suggest to people who may be new to the subject is that do a little bit of research first uh, into butterflies. Um, best places, obviously Google and YouTube have a wide range of um, different research material. Uh, myself, personally, I joined the Butterfly Conservation and I'm a member of the East Midlands branch. And that's where uh, I, I got my knowledge from butterflies. So what I'll do in this video is I will share what I consider to be my top 10 tips on how to photograph butterflies. And I'll do that by firstly going through five tips on how to set your camera up before you actually take your, your picture. And then I'll share another five uh, tips with you and how to actually compose and take the picture itself. So let's go. When it comes to photographic equipment for photographing butterflies, um, I choose to film or shoot with a full frame camera. Uh, I have a Nikon D850 and I've paired that with a Nikon 200 to 500. Um, using a telephoto lens allows me to stand further back from the butterfly, uh, compose my shot correctly, focus in and get the image that I'm after. My other lens of choice is this macro lens. This is a 105mm f2.8 Sigma macro lens um, which I would use for taking real static shots. Um, camera's fitted with a, a tilting screen at the back so I put it onto live view and then I would manually focus onto the butterfly to get the picture. So two lenses I recommend is telephoto lens and a macro lens. I would suggest that I would probably spend about 90% of my time hand holding my camera when I'm photographing butterflies. On the occasions where I do need to support it, my method of a choice is the monopod. I much prefer a monopod because firstly it's lighter, it's more mobile and the nature of taking butterfly photographs is that you are often mobile. When you're moving through countryside like this, long grass where a tripod will only make it too difficult for you. So I would recommend using a monopod. When using a monopod, what I would suggest that you do is you use your both your leg, your other legs, well, both your other legs, both your legs, uh, just like the two legs on a tripod. So with your two legs and the monopod itself, it gives you those three points of support. When photographing butterflies, generally the three things are almost always moving. The camera, the actual butterfly itself, and the flower or whatever it's perched on. So therefore, we need to use uh, a high shutter speed. Additionally, look at using as low a uh, f-stop as you can um, to keep your subject sharp, but large enough to throw the background out of focus. One of the most important aspects of photographing butterflies is to make sure that your depth of field is accurate um, and the way to do that is to make sure that your camera is parallel to your subject. You only get one geometrical plane of focus in any image at any one time and that's to do with your depth of field. So by making sure that the camera sensor which sits at the back of the camera is parallel with your subject you should get that geometrical plane of sharp focus and your images should be tack sharp. Uh, like most wildlife subjects, the, the most focal point that people look at is the eyes of the, the wildlife subject itself. 
So if the eyes are not sharp, then in my opinion, uh, the photo would be spoiled. When we look at camera settings for a photograph of butterflies, I have two separate sets. I have the general sets, set of settings. So I always shoot in RAW, evaluative metering, set it to auto white balance, and then also set it to continuous mode for shooting. If I'm using a telephoto lens, I'll have it on autofocus. Uh, if I'm using a macro lens, I will then manually focus. Next thing that I'll look at then is my exposure settings. So as I said, I shoot in manual. So I try to shoot as wide open as I can. So that would be between something like f2.8 to f5.6. And then you're looking at a shutter speed of between 1 250th to 1 500th of a second. And that would depend on the wind speed. And I al always shoot in auto ISO. Um, there are many different ways to photograph butterflies, but I would suggest that um, you look at three um, targets. Um, that's butterfly side on, from above, and then head on. Butterflies need the, the heat of the day to get active and uh, to use their wings. So therefore, during early morning and, and late afternoon, when it gets a bit cooler, that will afford you the opportunity to get closer to your subject and it will give you more time to get your photograph that you're after. Experience has shown me that chasing butterflies is both a waste of time and energy. Um, you're much better, and, and results certainly show that it's better to, to find a flower or a perch that they use, let them land on it, and, and, and then that's your opportunity to get the photograph that you're after. So, don't go chasing butterflies. Okay, one of the things that um, butterflies and, and, and insects in general are um, afraid of is shadows and silhouettes. You've all only got to see the movement of my hand, the movement of my camera, which is all in silhouette. Um, if you move that across an area where they're resting, and then they're likely to, to move off. Butterflies obviously are attracted to nice warm sunny days uh, and you, you'll notice that as soon as cloud cover goes over that they will then quickly disappear. So just be aware of your shadow where it's casting. For me the background of the um, photograph is as important as the subject itself. Uh, as we discussed I would use a, a long telephoto lens with a low f-stop um, look to get reasonably close to the subject as you possibly can and then the important thing is to have a clear distance between your subject and the nearest part of the background and the basic principle is to work on twice the distance from the subject to the background as a minimum uh, should give you photographs like these Okay, finally, all I would add that is that probably the most important skill that you can have in wildlife photography, uh, no matter what your subject is, is to have patience. Is to sit, wait, be quiet, be patient, and the opportunity should arise for you to get that photograph. Um, we spoke about not chasing butterflies. Um, it's not a good idea. If you can find a spot where a butterfly tends to land all the time or a flower in particular that it likes going on to then set your stall out to get that image that you're after so set your camera up keep it into to mind about what I spoke about background sit wait be patient and you should get the photograph that you're after so all I want to do now is just leave you with uh, a selection of my favorite butterfly images uh, and I hope you enjoy them Thanks for watching this edition of Kevin Hartley Photography and how to photograph butterflies. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have making it. To summarise the top 10 tips, I would give you my top 3 out of the 10.
At number three, it would be to think about your background. Your background is just as important as the, the photograph of the butterfly itself. Number two, focus on the butterfly's eyes. And at number one, keep the camera sensor and your camera parallel to your subject when you're taking the photographs. So, until the next time, if you've liked what you've seen, I can ask that you hit the like button. If you'd like to see more of this, then I can ask you to hit the subscribe button to my channel, Kevin Hartley Photography. It's completely free, it doesn't cost you anything, and it just gives me that incentive to keep coming out to places like this and photographing wildlife and nature. Until the next time, keep safe, take care, and I hope to see you soon. Bye for now.